I won't share personal information with a fake mother. An unbelievable line escaped my son's wife's lips, leaving me speechless. Even when I asked, won't you regret this? She replied mockingly, no way. Well, there's nothing I can do. I'm not a weak woman who cowers at words. You've crossed the line, and you shouldn't have. I retorted firmly. My name is Maria, and I'm about to turn 60. I lost my husband and raised two children with all my might. Fortunately, my lifelong love for Japanese culture led me to pursue calligraphy. Becoming a licensed instructor in Japan allowed me to support my family with my beloved art. Life is unpredictable, so the three of us lived in a modest apartment, practiced frugal living, and saved money every month. My oldest son, Simon, was an easy child when young, but as he grew older, I noticed his emotional fragility. Unlike her brother, my daughter Liddy grew into a spirited, lively girl. She worked diligently, earned her tuition through part-time jobs, graduated from college, landed her dream job, and works enthusiastically. Simon, at 35, remained indecisive and unmarried. I refrained from pressuring him about marriage, understanding that being single is not uncommon these days and not necessarily a route to unhappiness. Then Simon brought home his girlfriend. My daughter and I were curious about her, but were taken aback. She was not at all what we expected. Of course, judgments shouldn't be based on appearances, but Gloriana appeared much larger than Simon's slender 132-pound frame. Before Simon could introduce her, Gloriana boldly declared, he kept saying he wanted me to meet his mom, so here I am. Usually one would be nervous meeting their partner's parents, but Gloriana remained unfazed. It's common courtesy to address parents respectfully, even if you usually use nicknames. Was I just being bold-fashioned? I served tea and cake, and Gloriana devoured the strawberry shortcake in seconds, downed her tea, and demanded more. After some small talk, my daughter asked, what do you do for a living? Gloriana replied, call me sister. I'm not working right now. I had a senior colleague who annoyed me, so I choked in from behind and got fired. Her casual admission shocked me. Isn't that a bit harsh? My daughter chimed in, clearly uncomfortable. I wondered, is Simon planning to marry this woman? My red card was too harsh. Don't you think? Gloriana retorted defensively. I was taken aback, realizing I needed to impart some basic workplace norms. Times may have changed, but there are laws against unjust dismissal. Violence in the workplace is serious and can lead to immediate termination. Gloriana glared at Simon with a challenging smile and playfully slacked his shoulder. Hey, your mom took the side of my senior. Aren't you going to say something? My son looked troubled, but remained silent. I was concerned about the future. After that, Gloriana often visited our home to hang out. She would casually open our fridge, help herself to ice cream, drink cola, and munch on table snacks. My daughter and I were taken aback, but we hesitated to complain, fearing repercussions. Eventually, my son moved out and started living on his own with Gloriana, who insisted he live alone. Certainly, for her, living alone made it easier to see him than living with his family. One day, as I laid out a sheet of paper on the table and picked up my brush, my daughter asked, What's this month's quote? I used to write an inspiring quote every month and display it on the wall. This time, I wrote, Be gentle as a spring breeze with people and fierce as a lion king against evil. Gloriana peeked over and exclaimed, No way, that's really good. You could be a pro, mom. My daughter shot Gloriana a disapproving look and retorted sharply, She is a pro. Are you some kind of Japanese teacher or something? She's a calligrapher, you know, an instructor. I was proud of my daughter's eagerness to showcase that her mother was someone of significance. However, Gloriana didn't seem to pay much attention. I had to do a bit of calligraphy in elementary school for a cultural exchange, but I hated it, Gloriana continued, dismissing her own experience. The teachers were so nitpicky about the strokes. I felt like throwing ink on their heads. My handwriting's awful, so I should learn from mom, right? I think my son meant it casually, but at that moment, Gloriana shot him a devilish, scary glare and scolded him in a low voice. If you say something stupid again, a dropkick won't be enough. Don't get so mad, I interjected, but Gloriana just laughed loudly, gazing at the ceiling while watching TV. To put it nicely, she was strong and robust. To put it bluntly, she lacked grace. She was unreasonable, rude, rough, and crude. I couldn't see her as a suitable wife for my son. I had half a mind to throw ink on her head. Gloriana was also overly familiar with my daughter, Liddy. 
Liddy, you're so thin. Are you eating properly? She remarked one day. Gloriana, have you ever thought about dieting? I was taken aback, but Gloriana continued with a smile. How old is Liddy? I'm 28, she's 30. If you talk back to me like that, even though you're younger, I'll put you in a bulldogging headlock. Bulldog? Yeah, people often say I look like a bulldog. Are you picking a fight? Gloriana may have meant it as humor, but neither my daughter nor I found it amusing. One day, I called Simon home alone, and the three of us had a serious talk. Brother, I'll be clear, I am against your marriage to Gloriana, Liddy stated firmly. If that's what this is about, I'm leaving. This is important. I thought I could trust anyone you brought home, Simon, but Gloriana is beyond unreasonable, I added. That's not true. She has her good points, brother, Simon defended her. You can't say anything to Gloriana, can you? It's pathetic, Liddy remarked bluntly. If your girlfriend is rude to mom, you should warn her. Normally, you tell her to shut up. If she complains, you don't know Gloriana, so you can say that. If I tell her to shut up, I'll be in the hospital in two seconds. I believe that in a couple, if the woman is stronger than the man, it can be ideal. But Gloriana's strength is excessive. Marriage isn't just between two people. Both families become intertwined. I had planned to treat Simon's wife like my own child, but honestly, I have zero confidence in getting along with Gloriana. A heavy silence hung in the air until Simon suddenly stood up. What is this? Everyone badmouthing Gloriana, he exclaimed. Does everyone think that way? Even your friends? Yeah, they all say terrible things like that's not right and just criticize her, Simon continued defensively. I couldn't help but ponder if his friends might have a point. A marriage blessed by many, including family and friends, is desirable. I wanted my son to reconsider, but he staunchly defended Gloriana. You don't even try to see her good side, you just badmouth her. I'm fed up. We're not badmouthing her. Her parents are kind, they warmly welcome me whenever I visit, treat me to expensive steaks, and even took me to a three-star Michelin restaurant. Is that what you call kindness, brother? Liddy interjected, equally astonished. Simon continued to vent. Compared to her home, being here feels painful. If all we do is have depressing conversations like this, I won't come anymore. It seems Simon couldn't keep a secret from Gloriana. He had told her that my daughter and I were against the marriage. Suddenly, Gloriana stormed into the house with my son. I never imagined that both mother and daughter would criticize me. Gloriana retorted sharply. You're not the ones getting married, so stop interfering. Her tone turned rough, revealing what seemed to be her true nature. Gloriana started to pick on Simon too, blaming him for not speaking up properly. When Gloriana began to berate my child, I finally yelled, Stop it. People change when they meet someone of the opposite sex, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Did I make a mistake in raising my son? I don't recall spoiling him. The teenage and twenties are times for mental and physical training. Though I didn't indulge him, growing up without hardship can leave one weak-hearted prone to complaining even in a privileged environment. I wanted to raise a strong child, but a diamond can be fragile. Gloriana complained to Liddy and me unilaterally and left Simon behind. When Liddy started blaming Simon, he lost his temper. A guy who takes his mother's side when his mother and girlfriend fight is the worst, isn't he? Liddy remarked. That's not true. You don't care how I feel. Simon protested, caught in the middle. Enough already? Simon left, and we didn't see him for a while. Then one day, something unexpected happened. A postcard arrived in the mailbox. It was printed with We Got Married, and there was a photo of Simon and Gloriana smiling arm in arm. I realized they must have had a private ceremony and decided to send a congratulatory card. As a parent, I noticed the postcard strangely didn't include their new address. When I called my son, Simon, I learned they hadn't simply held a private ceremony. We had a grand wedding, Simon told me, with Gloriana's parents, relatives, friends, my friends, and colleagues. Weakness overtook me and my knees trembled. Do you realize what you've done? I asked, trying to hold back my emotions. If you're going to lecture me, I'll hang up, Simon warned. But I'll tell you, we held the ceremony without inviting any relatives from the groom's side. I couldn't help but picture my relatives and feel a deep sadness. I can't explain why we didn't invite them to Simon's wedding, I admit it. And now, I can't face them anymore. Did it Gloria's parents' object, thinking it was too much? I questioned, frustrated with the situation. An unreasonable child from unreasonable parents.
Something inside me began to crumble. Then Gloriana grabbed the phone. Put your hand on your chest and think hard about why you weren't invited to the wedding, she instructed. But I'll accept the card. I want to bring wedding and moving gifts to your new home. Please tell me the address. Then, unexpectedly, an unbelievable line came from Gloriana's mouth. I won't give personal information to a fake mother. I was left speechless, my mind reeling. Even when I asked, are you sure you won't regret this, she mocked me, no way. Well then, it can't be helped. I'm not a weak woman who will cower at being spoken to like this. Put my son on. If you're going to lecture, forget it. Put my son on now. I demanded loudly. Gloriana yelled back. Don't act tough on the phone. If you yell again, I'll headbutt you. Hello. I finally managed, trying to keep my voice steady. I have something important to talk about. Please come home. I don't want to hear anything depressing. I'm here to give you a congratulatory card. I said to my son, feeling a deep sense of pity. Simon might get upset and leave if he has to face Liddy's rapid-fire words. I thought to myself, deciding to talk to him alone. I wanted Simon and Liddy to grow into strong-minded people, so I didn't indulge them or allow selfishness during their teenage and twenties, I explained. Enough with the old stories. Where's the gift? Simon interjected eagerly, changing the subject to money. Since your father worked hard, I managed to save most of the money I earned from calligraphy. Simon's eyes lit up as the conversation turned to money. I lived frugally and saved, planning to surprise you with a substantial sum when you got married, I continued. Simon's smile widened and he leaned forward. I saved a hundred thousand dollars for you. My son's eyes widened in surprise. A hundred thousand dollars? He exclaimed with joy. But you did something unthinkable by holding a wedding without informing your real mother. In my view, that's something that should never happen, I said firmly. So, you're no longer my son, you're a stranger. It would be inappropriate to give such a large gift to a stranger, I declined. My son stood frozen, mouth open in shock for a few seconds, then burst into tears. What are you talking about? Stranger, give me the hundred thousand dollars. My only child is my daughter, Liddy. Please leave, I said firmly, trying to hold back my emotions. Wait, Gloriana interrupted. She didn't want to invite you. You should only care about your new family. My firm tone and cold attitude left Simon flustered. The conversation is over. Please leave. Stop talking like that. Are you saying you're cutting ties between parent and child? Simon cried out in desperation. Holding a wedding without telling me means you've already cut those ties, doesn't it? No, 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 I pleaded. No matter what, my husband said I wouldn't forgive him. It's always been like this. You always favored her. Simon ran out of the house in tears, screaming, as I had feared. I moved from the apartment to a newly built house and enjoyed a peaceful life with Liddy, free from stress. However, one day when I returned from shopping, Simon was standing in front of the house. I'm surprised. Moving to such a nice house. It looks solid and earthquake-resistant, he remarked casually. Did you follow me? I asked, taken aback. Please stop with the formalities. Give me the hundred thousand dollars. It's not fair to favor only your sister, Simon demanded. I have nothing to say to a stranger like you. Please leave, I replied firmly. At that moment, Liddy arrived home. Brother, you brought this upon yourself. Reflect on it a little, not that I'll forgive you even if you do, she added coldly. You plan to take two hundred thousand dollars, including my share? You're thirty-five and still expecting money from your parents. Don't you get it? Liddy's words were harsh. I intervened fearing Simon might explode. You chose this path. You chose your wife over your mother and sister. Holding a wedding in silence means just that, I pointed out as Simon hung his head, unable to argue. Suddenly, a taxi pulled up and Gloriana emerged, shouting, I wasn't invited, but here I am. I thought you were being manipulated by your toxic mother and sister, Gloriana accused, approaching Liddy and me like a machine gun, moving without telling your family. That's unbelievable. Family. I turned to face Gloriana and Simon again. Who's talking about Blue's family? I asked, raising an eyebrow. Oh, now you're going there? Gloriana replied dramatically, turning as if addressing the crowd. You're talking to the wall, not me. You've watched too many movies. But I don't mind that kind of timing. You said it. You called me a fake mother. I retorted. So I have no intention of giving wedding or moving gifts to a fake son and a fake daughter. 
if he nitpick, I'll counter with a neck chop before a dragon screw. Gloriana threatened. Unable to hold back, I yelled, speak seriously when discussing important matters. I warned you about yelling, or are you less intelligent than a crow? Gloriana shot back. I'll call the police, I declared. The mention of the police seemed to unsettle Gloriana, but she persisted nonetheless. We'll take the hundred thousand dollars. With that, Simon and Gloriana left. I was disappointed, not by their desire for the money, but by their lack of concern for family ties. In dramas, mothers often give in to emotion and hand over money to their children, but that would never benefit my son. If one strays from the right path, family should help. But if the entitled mindset isn't corrected, the same mistakes will be repeated. I was resolved not to give them a single dollar. I aim to treat good citizens with the gentleness and freshness of a spring breeze, but against evil, a spring breeze will protect those dear to me from enemies. I must face them like a lion. My policy is to respond sincerely to sincere people but to respond with strength to arrogant ones. The boomerang effect is scary. Given her attitude, Gloriana may have hurt many people in her life. Simon informed me that Gloriana's parents seemed to be on the brink of divorce, but he added, it's none of our business. Gloriana's father, who seems to be my age, had an affair with a woman twenty years younger a female employee with whom he had an inappropriate relationship for years. It seems his wife found out. During a marital fight, Gloriana and her father argued, and he ended up in the hospital after she struck him. I was surprised Simon's previous words were not a metaphor. She really did hit him. One night, Simon came crying to me. Please, I apologize for everything so far. Please help me. Despite it being night, Simon raised his voice. Family helps each other when in trouble, right? Your voice is loud, it's a nuisance to the neighbors, I reminded him. Sure enough, a neighbor was looking out the window. Reluctantly, I let Simon in. Simon continued, Gloriana and my father were arguing, and when my father slapped Gloriana, she unbelievably countered with a German suplex. A German, you wouldn't think Gloriana could do such a vivid bridge with that body, I remarked, surprised. Liddy slammed the table angrily. Speak seriously when you're asking for something serious. I'm not joking. I could see Simon was flustered. I don't know much about wrestling, so I don't know what a German suplex is, but I understood that Simon was confused. With his head in his hands, Simon spoke softly. My father hit the back of his head and is now hospitalized. He's lying about falling down the stairs, but the doctor should be informed. This is an assault case. I considered the situation carefully. If your father can't work, our finances will be tight. Neither your mother nor Gloriana work, and my meager salary can't support us. Then you must get Gloriana to work quickly, I advise, though I worried if any company would hire her. Despite the sarcasm towards Gloriana, Simon didn't get angry. Instead, he bowed his head. Mom, I don't need a hundred thousand dollars. Just give me ten thousand dollars, please, Simon pleaded. It's impossible, I answered without hesitation. Understood. I'll bring Gloriana, and she'll apologize. Simon insisted. That won't happen. I'll make her apologize, I replied, feeling my parental instincts wavering. The next day, Simon returned with Gloriana. Gloriana, with an air of solemnity, lowered her head and said, Please forgive my rudeness until now. Lies, did you think you were being rude for a moment? Liddy retorted. Gloriana glared at her briefly before hanging her head again, pleading, Please help our family. I beg you. I refuse. I answer firmly, watching Simon's face pale. Mom, Simon started, but before Gloriana could kneel, I interjected. It's useless to grovel on the floor. Ignoring Gloriana's humiliated tremor, I continued. When dealing with someone who's lived for 60 years, it's important not to underestimate them. Without knowing the hardships they've faced. Gloriana looked up at me, and I smiled wryly. Did I seem like just a gentle calligraphy teacher to you? Even if you claim to be a mafia woman, I will be intimidated. A mafia woman? What a lack of imagination, I remarked. It's not about that. I'm patient, but once I decide not to forgive, I can be utterly cold-hearted. Understand? Isn't family supposed to help each other in times of trouble? Liddy added, her disbelief evident. Gloriana, you've crossed the line. You shouldn't have. Please leave. I insisted firmly. Realizing she wouldn't be forgiven, Gloriana turned her frustration towards Simon. It's your fault for having zero persuasiveness and credibility. 
It's your fault for not being patient. You promised to endure whatever was said, Liddy chimed in sharply. Take it outside, you're unbearable, Gloriana snapped, storming out. Cold-hearted sister, you should have given her a pile driver on the concrete, not on the carpet. Feeling threatened, Simon ran after Gloriana, and I didn't stop them. Despite hearing my son's screams from outside, I ignored them. Eventually, Simon divorced Gloriana, and Gloriana's parents also divorced, a family torn apart. My heart aged. If I laughed at others' tragedies, I wouldn't escape the boomerang effect. Simon visited the house again, but I spoke to him at the entrance and didn't let him in. Um, this is hard to say, but can I live here with you? Simon asked. It's impossible. I responded immediately, knowing that indulging him now would be meaningless. After that, I heard nothing from Simon. Days passed like a storm, but now both Liddy and I enjoyed clear skies every day. One day, Liddy mentioned she would bring her current boyfriend over. I felt the pang of anxiety if her boyfriend turned out to be another rude and unreasonable man, I would feel it was fate. However, the young man my daughter brought was sensible and decent, and I breathed a sigh of relief.